Hello, and welcome to the Mindful Entrepreneur Podcast, where your hosts, Dati and Jerry Jimenez. Join us as entrepreneurs and brother and sister interview inspiring leaders in different fields to explore how they've achieved results and fulfillment. Let's get started as soul, passion, and business come together at The Mindful Entrepreneur. Hello, we're here with Dr. Leon Vieira Sampe. He's a medical surgeon from Universidad Javeriana, and he's got a magister in alternative and complementary medicine from Universidad Nacional. These are both top universities in Colombia, South America. We're so grateful to have you on our podcast. We know you have a fascinating story that will inspire many. So let's dive in. Can you share with us how did you get started on your path? I chose to study alternative and complementary medicine uh, well because that's what helped me most from for, for my disease for what I have which we will talk later and uh, I, I thought hey that's what I want to do because that's the way I can really help people with their diseases and their things but uh, for the last uh, six years, more or less, I've been practicing aesthetic medicine procedures uh, to enhance uh, the beauty in, in the skin of, of my patients. Thank you for that. You mentioned you studied alternative medicine because it helped you the most with your condition. Can you share more with us about that? I was diagnosed with MS, multiple sclerosis, 23 years ago. But the disease has been with me for 25 years at least. It's such a huge accomplishment to have achieved all you have given your diagnosis. When did you first realize you had MS? In the 10th grade, mm -hmm. in school, the disease began at that moment because I had like symptoms in my eyes. I had double vision. At first, the diagnosis didn't come with those symptoms. But when I was in third semester in med school, I began feeling like my uh, left hand was like a number, yeah. like uh, like hands walking on my hand, yeah. and and the, when I uh, was uh, let's say entering into the medical system, I received a lot of of uh, the exams and and MRIs and stuff and. That's when the, the diagnosis came. That's when it finally appeared in the in the reports of the of the of the MRI that I had MS. Our understanding of MS is that it's a debilitating condition that affects the brain and the nervous system, and that even writing or making a simple decision can become very difficult. Wouldn't doing medical procedures and aesthetic procedures be almost impossible for you or anyone with MS? When I was sick and I was really bad in the wheelchair, I had a tremendous tremor in my hands. I couldn't eat by myself, I couldn't get dressed by myself. Of course I couldn't write and of course I couldn't do any uh, aesthetic procedure, of course I couldn't. But with time, with therapy and with the uh, positive thinking, let's say, uh, I used a lot of neuro-linguistic program. Oh. you know what that yes, is? Yes, of yes, course. Well, I, I use a lot of that. And well, my hands became steady again. I, I, I could do procedures like that and it turned out I, I am good doing them. I, I have a soft hand. I can do them and uh, people are not going to feel much pain. Not, not greater than with any other doctor, let's say. So, hey, I can do this. I am good doing this. So, okay. Incredible. So, all through your adult life, you've lived with MS, yet you managed to finish high school, go to medical school, and specialize in different fields, and yet still have your own practice. By the way, how did the idea of having your own business come about? Can you share more of that? The thing is, when I managed to, to recover, when I managed to stop my disease, and, and walk again without a cane and, and doing all sort of things again. Well, it's sort of, hey, I mean, in the side of sick people, you know, with limitations. And when I got to, to, to recover and, and, and get better and all, I suddenly jump into the normal life, you know. 
had to work. I needed money. I was no longer like uh, a sick patient who received uh, help from his family, friends, whatever. I was a, a normal pe person again, so I had to to think about work and and things. And uh, that's when I I, managed, I said, hey, I want my own office. And I, I I thought, okay, what I'm going to do in my office? I had a master's degree in alternative and complementary medicine, so I said, well, that's what I'm gonna do. Of course, that's what I'm gonna do. But uh, life shifts a lot, and the, the currents take you to different ways you are not expecting to to take detours or or something. And uh, I started with. Uh, aesthetic procedures and it came out that I was very good doing that man. So it sounds like you found your core business almost by default, like you had a hidden talent you didn't even know about. Do you think education has helped you with this and your journey as an entrepreneur? Yes, I do believe it's uh, very important to, to study because, uh, well, it's a way uh, to, to be at the, the front, you know, to be, uh, to have the latest knowledge and things, the, the innovation, you know, it's innovation, that's the word, because, well, things shift, things change, uh, technology is better every day. Speaking of innovations, what innovations would you say have helped you in your business and with your mindset? The neuro-linguistic program was really innovation for me. Of course, that was 14 years ago, but still I use it nowadays because it's really important because I've seen it work for me and for my business as well, for my health. So you do believe that people can benefit by improving their mindset? You are what you think. What you're, what's in your mind, it's your reality. That's a good point. Can you expand on that? It's all in your mind. I mean, how can you be successful when you're thinking you're poor, when you think you're no good, when you think, you, hey, I can't be a good entrepreneur, a good manager. How can you be a good manager? How can you be successful when you think like that? And I mean, that uh, can be applied for, for your life. How can you get better from a disease? When in your mind the information is, your disease, it's impossible to cure. You can't get better from your disease. You, well, how can you get better if in your mind is the negative information about your disease, you know? Right. And, and uh, well, that's one of the things uh, that really helped me a lot. When I stopped believing what the uh, physicians told me, what my neurologist told me, because those, things they told me were negative things. They were no good, they didn't help me. They programmed me for, for being ill, to get better, uh, worse and worse by them every day, you know? Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Did you have a mentor that influenced your way of thinking? Uh, well, yes, uh, I would have to say that my teachers uh, in alternative and complementary medicine really uh, influenced me in my the way I think the way I I like see patients. So your professors were a great influence. Of course, I I, I received a lot of from them because they taught me how to think differently, how to hey stop believing everything that, uh, they tell you and, and be more like uh, ask more questions. Have these challenges taught you any lessons you'd like to share with our audience? Uh, of course, uh, the things I learned uh, throughout my life and throughout the management of my disease and my uh, difficult uh, times and all, of course, they taught me lessons for, for the rest of my life and of course they taught me lessons for my office. Huh, for example? It's very important to uh, like start thinking differently. Shift the way you think. Stop 
believing what they tell you with your eyes shut and like asking yourself like hey is that true is that the, the only truth existing in this world i mean is that is that the only thing or are any other possibilities are there any other possibilities something different that's very important as well yes Questioning and exploring possibilities. That's always important. Was there anything else? Let's say being persistent. Being persistent. You have to persist. Do it and do it again and again until you manage to do it right. Because, well, sometimes like if you can't do it in the first day, okay, I'm going to retire, I'm going to go, I'm going to leave this. And, and you're going to lose a lot of opportunities and, and things in your life. So you have to be like persistent. You have to try it again and again and persist. It's one of the things. And with my office, of course, I did that. Uh, uh, I, I used Groupon at first to move my, my office, to, to bring patients to, to my office. It helped me. It helped me. But afterwards, it didn't help me so much. That's a good point about Groupon helping new businesses at the beginning, but not so much later on. You're right. New businesses can afford ongoing discounts and expect to make a profit long term. Plus, you probably didn't want to do it anyway because your perceived value would drop. So what did you do to grow your business? Doing things right. Being professional. Doing things right. Earning the, the, the confidence in your patients, you know? Earning, making your patients uh, trust you, the trust, you no? Know? That's very, very important. You have to do, well, I've done things correctly, very professional, and so patients uh, are, are trusting, let's say. They trust what I tell them, what I do to them. They, they really trust me, and sometimes, they tell me, hey, you're a good guy, you're a good doctor, you're a good person, you don't want to harm anyone. You're very professional. They tell me, hey, I'm very happy here. They tell me. Do you mind if we take a step back for a minute? You mentioned you were in a wheelchair for 10 years. So how did you first get started with your practice? Did you get a bank loan? Did family or friends invest in you? I mean, for some of our audience that are just starting out and maybe discouraged about where they are right now, how can they get started from zero? Okay, when I mm, recovered and, and stood up from the wheelchair, and, well, I was really insecure, really, really insecure of doing anything because, well, I, I stopped working. I stopped doing things for a period of, of 10 years, I'd say. But I look for a job in, in one of those job, uh, the, how do you say? Uh, uh, like like a job hunter site? Or? Yes, yes, like uh, a site. In, yeah. and, uh, so I began working and uh, I had in my mind, hey, I want to, to be able to have my own office. I don't want to be uh, like uh, one more of the, of the working people, you know. If I want to do what I want to do, and if I want to be free to do what I want to do, well, I need my, my own office. And so, well, I, let's say I jumped from two or three different jobs, and I managed to uh, save some money. So I could order a credit card, so I could uh, get a, this office. Well, that's how it began. Wow. So not only did you get one job, you actually got three, and you opened up your practice. Talk about facing your fears and going beyond your limitations. So what has this helped you learn about yourself or your business? Uh, I have learned that it's very, very important to be persistent, to try and try and try until you finally get it right. And uh, it's very important to learn from your mistakes. You have to like be aware of what you have done 
wrong so you can uh, change it, repair it or not do it again in the future. That's also very important. Uh, it's very important to be in your business, to spend time in your business, to make your business grow. You have to focus in one thing. You cannot be like, okay, I'm gonna put my, uh, my office, but still I'm working in some other place, or maybe I'm spending time with my friends, and I'm not like, putting your mind into your business, you know? To finalize, what pearl of wisdom would you give our audience right now? What would you tell them that could help them continue on their journey? Uh, believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Believe in what you can do. Believe that you can do things, because you can. Uh, when someone tells you, hey, you can't do that, is the person who's speaking of his own limitations, not yours. Thank you so much, both Vida Factor and The Genius Spot with our Mindful Entrepreneur podcast are very grateful for you and the inspiration that you bring to our listeners with your journey that clearly hasn't been easy. Uh, and yet you have managed not only to start a business, but to have a business that works and that is thriving. So thank you for you for your persistence and for your example and for your time. You're very welcome. It's been a, a pleasure for me. Thank you for inviting me as well. And uh, well, you're very welcome. Hey, and before you leave, both The Genius Spot and Vita Factor want to thank you, our awesome audience, for being part of our podcast. And if you found this episode of value, please share it with your friends and loved ones so they too can join the Mindful Entrepreneur.